Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my JavaScript scripting tutorial. This is part four in the series in which I explain every capability JavaScript brings you. From the last tutorial, I was unable to completely cover all the comparison operators, so here they are for you. First off, we have the greater than symbol, the less than symbol, the greater than or equal, the less than or equal, the equals, and the not equal comparison operators. And here we have all the logical operators. Logical operators, if you watched the last video, are often used in combination with comparison operators that are a little bit more complicated. When it comes to the logical operators, you have the AND logical operator, the OR logical operator, and the logical NOT. The logical NOT provides the opposite of the result of the comparison. So in this example, we are testing to see if 5 is greater than 2. Obviously, that answer is true, but by putting the logical NOT operator, which is the exclamation point you can see here, it actually returns the opposite value being false instead of true. Also, you're going to see within JavaScript that there are multiple different operators available for you to edit data. There's the addition operator, the subtraction operator, the multiplication and division, then you have the modulo operator, which returns the remainder of a division. So if you divided 5 by 2, the modulo operator would return the result of 1, which would be the remainder of that division. Then you have the shorthand increment operator, which is the double plus sign. What this does is it will automatically add 1 to a variable just by putting those two additional plus signs behind that variable, followed by a semicolon. The decrement does the opposite, it instead subtracts the value of 1. Then you have another additional shorthand way to do additions. Here we go are going to want to use the variable which is called SAMP VAR to add 2 to itself and then reassign it back to the variable. If you wanted to do that, you would just simply follow that variable with the plus sign, then the equal sign, and whatever you would want to add to it. And also, you can do the same thing with this decrement operator that's provided here. Now I'm going to continue going on, explaining exactly how this JavaScript script operates. We're going to talk about the switch statement. If you can't remember since the last tutorial, I have event handlers set up so that whenever I click on these spans that are right here, and if you don't understand what I'm saying, watch the previous tutorial. When I click on these spans, it automatically makes calculations for me and changes the line of text. So I'm going to explain exactly how all of this is working. Whenever you click on this span right here, it sends the value of 2 to this function right here, which is the testing switch value. Here I'm defining a variable named value passed and the item sent, in this case 2, is going to be assigned to the value passed variable. Now here is the switch statement. Here we're going to do a bunch of tests to see if this value passed is equal to either 0, 1, 2, or 3, and if it's not equal to any of them, we're going to perform this default action right here. So 2 comes through. Obviously it's not equal to 0, so we are going to skip this statement altogether. It is not equal to 1, so we're going to skip all of these statements here and it is going to be equal to 2. So what we are going to do is to assign the string to value to return 2, which is the name of this variable. We're going to assign the 2 or 3 cent string to this value right here, and what the break statement does is it throws you completely out of the switch statement. Then what it would do is it would continue to process with this function right here, which provides you with the capability to change this line of text, which is on your screen. There actually is another way to compare values, which I have not talked about, and this is the conditional operator, which you see right here. What this does is it does comparisons all on one line. It can only be used to do an either-or comparison. So in this case, what's going on is it's testing to see if x is greater than y, if so, then you would put a question mark. It would perform this calculation, which is multiply y by 2. If not, you can see here as a colon, it would multiply x times 2. So that is the conditional operator. Now you know about every operator that's available to you in JavaScript.
Now I'm going to cover looping. Again, just like before, when you click on this, it sends an event handler that calls this function, in this case, testing for loop. And it passes, in this case, the numbers 2 and 20, which go into these areas right here. And then operations are performed on them. I'm going to skip this because I've already explained how to add values to variables. Jump right in here to the for statement. What this for loop does is it provides you with the ability to perform the same action over and over again until a certain condition is met. In this case, that condition is going to be that i is less than or equal to whatever the end value variable is equal to. How you set up a for loop is you first start off with the keyword for followed by this bracket. Then you're going to define a variable that is going to iterate you through the loop you're going to assign a value to that iterator. We're going to continue to run this loop and all the actions that are contained between this opening curly brace and this closing curly brace until this comparison operator returns the value of false. And then down here after the semicolon, you're going to iterate through these i values that are associated here. So basically what we're going to do in this case, if you look over here, is continue to add a blank space followed by whatever the value of i is to the variable value to return until i is greater than or equal to n value, which in this case is the number 20, as we see over here. After it performs all these actions, it's going to send the result to the edit node text function just like before. Now I'll go over the while loop. Here again, we're defining a function testing while loop passing variables in, and creating new variables. This is what the while loop does. It has only a comparison operator within these brackets right here, followed by the keyword while, and just like the for loop, it iterates through everything that is between the opening and curly brackets until this value returns a value of false. Since we don't have an iterator within this body of the while loop, we have to put that down here, so this is going to iterate just like the i value was iterated before. And then we're going to perform a similar action, which is to assign a variable to a blank space between two double quotes, followed by another variable, and then assign it to the, the variable value to return. And then send that information to the edit node text. And finally, we have the do while loop. Again, two variables are passed in, a whole bunch of variables are decided upon, and then the do while loop guarantees that all of these actions will be performed at least one time. So what we're going to do is again assign value to return to a blank space and so forth and so on. Here we're using a shortcut. This is going to multiply two times the start value variable and then reassign whatever that value is back to the start value variable. And then here is an if statement that checks to make sure that start value never goes over the value of 40. Now I on purpose set this up to actually continue running indefinitely, just so I can find a reason to talk about the break statement. What the break statement does is it throws you out of a loop, and it's a way to keep your looping from becoming what they call an infinite loop. So it's just a short little tip way to protect yourselves from having your looping system uh, fall into an infinite looping pattern, which is very bad. And then you can see here, to finish off the do while loop, you actually have the while followed by a conditional down here. And then here is another operator, and here is another conditional. And if either one of these values, since we're using the or operator here, return the value of true, it will continue to loop indefinitely. And you can see here my JavaScript coding is all completely done, so I'm going to end my hiding of my JavaScript code with two forward slashes, two negative signs in this bracket right here. I'm going to close my script with the closing scripting tag, and then here is all the regular HTML which I explained to you in the last presentation. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below.